first things first, rest in peace, Jiraiya Sensei. Oh my god, I can't believe I gotta say goodbye to this man again. Drop a like one more time, one final time for Pervy Sage, Jiraiya Sensei. Ah, this episode, the finale of the Boyhood Arc, episode 136 of Boruto Naruto Next Generations. For better or worse, whatever you want to say about this arc, this episode, at the very least, this one, went out with a, a, a real nice bang. And man, I ain't gonna lie, I'm gonna miss seeing Pervy Sage. I think, like, throughout the entirety of everything we've seen with this flashback, this time travel, whatever you want to call it, Jiraiya in particular is the thing that hit the feels the most and man the execution let's talk about it that's right people we've reached the end of the boyhood arc with Boruto Naruto Next Generations episode 136 and it's been one hell of a ride ups downs highs lows you name it this arc was there and i ain't gonna lie for better or worse though this arc was one hell of a, a, a ride it really was just like so many emotional moments and i'm just in disbelief i can't believe that it's over man like you know we was complaining for a few episodes here and there but looking back this is the most exciting that the boruto anime has been for a long time and i know everyone's gonna say well that's because we went to the past well yeah <laughs> that doesn't take away from the fact that this arc it was exciting a lot of really insane moments a lot of awesome moments and a lot of heartfelt moments now this episode in particular 136 it takes place of course where the last one left off udashiki has been defeated which again yeah kind of i mean there's the argument regarding the plot hole because some people will say well um and otsutsuki doesn't necessarily leave a karma mark uh automatically when you defeat them it's a choice but there's an argument there whether or not that created a plot hole why Udashiki didn't leave behind a karma mark on Naruto or Boruto when he was defeated. And of course, that wasn't addressed in this episode. So we're going to put that. It is what it is. I mean, at the end of the day, there's an argument to make as to why that doesn't create a plot hole. Personally, I just feel as though the way it was explained by Momoshiki at the end, it kind of seemed like it was an automatic thing. Like, you know, once you cre uh, defeat a god, you automatically become different, so to speak. But, um... Yeah, it wasn't addressed in this one regarding the karma mark, so it is what it is. And following the defeat of Udashiki, we get to see, of course, Boruto and Sasuke gearing up to go back to the future. I was going to say the past. Back to the future. And they get confronted by Sakura. And I'm not going to lie, one of the things that I really, really loved and appreciated and adored about this episode is the, the way it was able to invoke emotion in me. Like, there was moments where I was dying of laughter. I was just like... <laughs> oh my god <laughs> this part right here <laughs> oh pervy says i love you so much you crazy bastard <laughs> going hysterically laughing at so many moments and then again later on i'd be crying and then i'd be in, in the middle i'd be tuned in really deep like oh man this moment and that moment right there when she tried to confront sasuke about that letter and jiraiya stepped up like come on let, let's cut the malarkey jiraiya has known the majority of this arc what was going on and that's why of course which we'll get to in a bit why he made that request of Sasuke or whatever but Jiraiya knew all along what was up he knew because at the end of the day he immediately jumped in to cover their asses when he's like oh yes it's because they're big fans of mine and I ain't gonna lie I lost it I laughed hysterically at that way he's like well yeah you know they uh, got information on everybody I know because they wanted to be just like me <laughs> Seeing Sasuke's reaction, Boruto's reaction, even Sakura's reaction. Like, so this grown-ass man just got this 12-year-old's information, her height, her weight. And when she calls him a creep and a weirdo and everything, I lost it. Even especially when Sasuke had to go along with it and say, yeah, um, Master Jiraiya, we're, we're huge fans. Like, you're huge fans of his perverted books and of him being a pervert. Like, I loved it, man. I miss Jiraiya so much because of stuff like this. It's like, you have a really deep... Jiraiya, if anybody's ever heard of Gintama, he gives me that, that Gintama feel. Whereas, like, he'll be the most silliest goofball you will ever freaking meet. But then also, there's a, a, a depth to him. There's a story there. So, stuff like that, I go, like, I lost my shit. Especially when it turned black and white. Sasuke is like, yeah, no, that that's the story, yeah. <laughs> and then Sakura's disgust 
Oh, well, I guess it's time to continue looking for a Sasuke-kun because you're a weirdo and a creep. Get away from me. <laughs> and the way it was handled, because again, this arc was pretty much like the Lost Tower movie, honestly, with the way it was done of how like, okay, so everybody that knew of Boruto and Sasuke's appearance in the village got their minds erased, minus, what was it, uh, Denki's father, which that's crazy. He did create some type of difference. Essentially, Boruto created the bullet train that they have around Konoha because Denki's father was to do that her the idea of the train and it's even addressed when we see Denki and his father walking in the episode so Boruto made some change to the past unbeknownst to Sasuke Sasuke didn't realize like oh shit he did that so very very interesting I wonder if they would have had the train had it not been for Boruto you know making that little mistake but I'm not gonna lie uh I kind of saw it coming but at the same time I'm still a little disappointed that like everyone got their memories erased I mean I get it it would have created a massive like holy shit y'all don't remember seeing Boruto to and Sasuke back then but it had to be done so you know everybody from Sakura to Hinata to Jiraiya Naruto everybody got their minds erased of you know the appearance of Boruto and Sasuke in the past and for better or worse I mean I get it like clear as day clear as day it shows that Jiraiya knew what was up when he said like you know that that's the fun thing like it'll ruin the book if you know the ending and he figured it out he knew for a long time that this is Sasuke and this must be Naruto's son so that means like and it sucks that he doesn't get to have that peace when he goes to his grave of like man you know he he made it like but then at the same time if you think about it it does it, it, it's like a it's a mixed thing for me I feel as though because if you think about it Jiraiya did get to know at some given point that Naruto would become Hokage and would have a son well maybe not the Hokage part because he doesn't get that much information but he knows that his student has a happy ending he knows that he's able to rescue his best friend he gets that at some given point again he gets his mind erased but at the very least it's a nice feeling for me as a fan to see that so Jiraiya at, at least some given point got a, an inkling of that his student that he cared about so much achieve some type of dreams and some type of happiness and peace and everything and i love to see it it sucks that it had to be that way but come on let's be real here if not then there will be so many plot holes for starters how jiraiya doesn't when he brings up you know when he's fighting pain about the renegon or whatever because he also referenced about like his weird eye powers i think or something along the lines of that which he probably again was familiar with like yo so he has the renegon too so that would create a conflict right there like why doesn't jiraiya when he's going up against pain and and talking about the renegon and thinking about it why doesn't he flashback to Udashiki it had to be done there was too many things where Jiraiya would know it would change a lot so yeah I mean I don't remember to be honest with you and maybe I'm off but I don't remember the shotting gun having the power to erase memories again I could be totally off and misremembering I read a million and watch a million anime and manga but I don't remember it having that ability but he did go into he changed his shotting gun back into the third tomo form instead of the EMS to do this so maybe it's one of the techniques that Sasuke has in particular or it's just a thing of like again jutsu of some sort but either way Way, yeah it erased certain aspects because you got to think in terms of the narrative remember this is boruto naruto next generations the most important key thing of all of this is that boruto gets character development and i guess adult sasuke the people from the past like their story already has been told it's been cemented it happened they went through their journey so they don't need to have uh, any type of developments from this because this is boruto's journey and i really really hope that from here on forward, Boruto maintains the character development that he obtained from, you know, meeting his father in the past. You know, it was a nice little touching moment to one last time see Naruto and Boruto have a conversation. Naruto even sent them off with a little care package. And, ah, it was just, it was so freaking emotional, all of that stuff. You know, seeing when all the characters were grouped around, like, hey, wasn't we with that guy? Who was he? And like, ah, yeah. I mean, at the, at the very least... I may not remember it, but it, it, it's, uh, I was going to sound so freaking corny, but it's in their hearts. <laughs> the journey, the adventure was in their hearts. And, you know, for what it was worth, I'm not going to lie. It was dope to see it. It's dope that Boruto at least got to meet a lot of these people, including the legendary Jiraiya. I love the setup, if you think about it now, that was going into this arc where, you know, Boruto was starting to wonder about, well, who's Jiraiya and everything. And, you know, the lie that Naruto said, I was never like that as a child. And it's like, fam, you were worse. <laughs> you were worse. Then eventually, I 
at a given point, they leave the past and head toward the future. A couple things were clipped off in this as well. For example, the time traveling turtle, uh, he's probably not going to be around anymore because even though he says, hey, so where you want to go to in history next? I got a lot of chakra. So, I, I mean, there's a possibility he could return at some given point, but because of what Boruto said, he took it as a command. So he's going to go look and search for something, but that doesn't necessarily mean that he won't return at some given point. Who knows? Maybe a couple years from now, they could decide, man, let's do another time travel arc and this time take Boruto back to like the Madara era or something. Please, I would freaking love that shit. I want to see that shit. So the fact that he said he had all this chakra stored up left, maybe he's going to go on his journey and if, you know, the studio behind it decides one day they want to do another time travel arc like this, they might do it and I'd be all for it and it'd be interesting to see how they would handle it because I'm imagining that time they won't have Sasuke. Maybe it'll be Boruto and Mitsuki and Sarada or something. So to shake things up a bit. I mean, you know, while I'm on that thought, there was a couple missed opportunities with this arc. Uh, some that come to my mind immediately is like, well, we didn't have no Orochimaru involvement. Would have been nice for Boruto to get more of an idea of Orochimaru. We didn't have young Sasuke at all. Obviously, he went to Orochimaru and things were different at this point. Like, you couldn't just walk up to Orochimaru at this point in time because you'd get killed. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, there was some missed opportunities I would have loved to see, especially, again, young Sasuke. I would have loved to see, even if he gets his mind erased later, see him see his adult self and how would he have reacted to seeing that so eventually i stopped being an emo piece of shit and i become a good guy how did that happen so i would have loved to see it but again it didn't happen and i think well with his shotting gun prowess it would have been difficult to explain how he, his um how he gets under that getting juice when all that works but i mean he's way weaker than adult sasuke well i don't know because sasuke with his chakra he was weaker than little sakura and we get back to the present timeline and this is where the feels came in if we you know had our laughs and, and whatnot in the past with pervy sage then the feels started because boruto goes to have a, a meal with his father after of course you know he heads home and they see konoha again and uh, you you could easily see the distinctions of course besides the fact that like the hokage monument has the extra you know kakashi tsunade and naruto on there but even the music cues go back to the boruto soundtrack and i'm like can we can we get og naruto soundtrack permanent like i'm just saying <laughs> but before we get to my favorite part of the episode let's quickly talk about uh sasuke returning home to sakura and seeing how much he appreciates his wife and how much he appreciates everything because like you know you could always imagine when somebody tells you like yo i rode for you i had your back no matter what but for sasuke to actually see what his wife in the past when he left the village what she was going through for him and how d distressed and how she was breaking her head to try and bring him back i think that that gave him even more love for her because to actually see how people react and how they treat you and how they think about you and how they move when you're not around gives you some type of feeling of like wow so you know seeing that little moment which again sakura and sasuke have had the most weirdest relationship leading up onto it but it's nice to see a, a little bit of happiness i would have loved to see sarada show up for something in this episode that was i guess another little missed opportunity but it was more about their relationship and you know from the past of how much she rode for him till now that she still rides for him and it's like yo even if you gotta leave the village from time to time as long as you come home you know she had love for the dude. And we even got that really interesting and nice uh, conversation when Sasuke told Naruto like, yo, yeah, we was in the past. And Naruto is in disbelief of like, oh, I actually got to meet my son. Like, ah, it just felt like so much. You could argue it was fan service, whatever, but it just felt like such a great moment to hear Naruto being like, what? You, you guys got to see? And I'm sure to a certain degree, it probably made him feel a way of like, oh man yeah i got to actually see pervy sage i'm, I'm sure he would have loved to see pervy sage one more time and who knows what the future holds with what's going on in the manga right now but as it stands right now it, even if kashin koji turns out to be who we believe it to be i'm trying to be light on the spoilers for anime only i don't think it's going to have anything to do with this arc maybe it could be referenced like hey i remember him but i don't think it's going to have anything to do with uh the events of this arc in particular having an impact to creating him then again we never know who knows if jiraiya the, the memory returns to him at some given point but for now i don't think that this arc is going to have impact on canonical stuff in the manga that's just me either way the naruto and sasuke conversation next to you know the hokage office that was nicely done and uh it just showed again how like naruto's reaction to like oh man i can't believe and really driving home like these motherfuckers don't remember shit of what happened like it, they their memory is gone kapoops and then the best moment of the episode again boruto and naruto meeting up to have a cup of ramen by Jiraiya's grave and leave. Oh, I go lie, man. Just talking about it is getting me emotional. Like I, I, I teared up. I teared up, and I don't nowadays. I teared up from anime a lot back in my day, but nowadays it's hard for me to tear up against uh, while watching anime. I don't know. It's just me. I don't really get like 
emotional like that. But this one, this one hit me. This one hit me because Jariah has always been like, for the people that, whether they missed out on a parental figure, whether they missed out on somebody that, you know, gave you that fatherly, grandfatherly love that you wish you had. Jariah always felt like that dude that you wish was your grandfather. You wish that was your father. You wish he was in your life. So to see, you know, it all come full circle. And, you know, when Naruto's like, so you got to meet Pervy Sage. What, what, what was he like for you? And he's like, oh, well, you know, he was a perv and a slob, but he was so freaking cool. And when Naruto said, yeah, he was, wasn't he? Oh, my God. Such an amazing rap up to this arc the boyhood arc with naruto and boruto having the cup of ramen uh, by jiraiya's grave leaving the cup of ramen by jiraiya's grave and the way it was wrapped up honestly the boyhood arc incredible wrap up did it was it perfect hell no it had some uh problems with the fights with udashiki and all that stuff and you know i'll leave a lot of that dissecting for a different video but i just really wanted to come in and say if you missed out on this arc i'd highly recommend if you want some more maybe you haven't been following the boruto anime or and you've been missing out you want to see some naruto uh, verse stuff definitely check out the boruto uh, boyhood arc it's probably one of the best it is definitely the best original arc in the boruto anime hands down there's no original material that is more exciting than this arc i i, I absolutely loved it and i thought it was a freaking great thing curious what you guys thought about this though everything that went down in this episode how did you feel about seeing jiraiya one last time the jokes did you find them hysterical with jiraiya they're saying that they're his fans fans of his book make out paradise what did you think about that how did you feel about the way it was handled um the memory erasing did you like it you, uh, hated it again i understood and i appreciated that it was about boruto's character development it would have been nice to make like a big change and see what it changes in the world but i mean there's something they gave a, a little bone of like well, Boruto technically created the train by giving Denki's father the idea of running behind, you know, running uh, through Konoha. So it gave us something of a change that Boruto accidentally made in the past. But what are your thoughts on that? How do you feel about Naruto and Sasuke's little conversation up there? Uh, Sasuke's conversation with Sakura and that ending with Boruto and Naruto having ramen by Jiraiya's grave and leaving a cup of ramen by Jiraiya's grave. Like, man, Naruto, the something about this story that every time we revisit certain moments, certain characters and things of that nature, it hits the feels. The series is, is one of those things and I think most Naruto fans can agree that it's like we have this weird bond and it's like an old friend that every now and then, especially with the anime, every now and then we revisit it and we say what's up and um, it's a good feeling. I absolutely love this arc for better or worse. That's all I have for this one though. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you liked anything I had to say or enjoyed the video, drop me a like. I'd greatly appreciate it. And if you want more from me, make sure to subscribe. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram. Hit that bell to get all notifications. And if you want to follow any of my other social media, links of course are in the description below. I'm from the world and as always people, have an awesome day. And remember the golden rule. Anime and manga and Jiraiya for life, boy! Have an awesome day. Peace in. And once again, RIP and major respect to the GOAT, Jiraiya Sensei. Have an awesome day. Enjoy the next ride, but I was the best ride. But I hope you.